Social Security beneficiaries, including retirement, disability, SSDI, survivors, and SSI. How much would your new benefit be? I have all the details for you and the breakdown in this video. Let's get into it right away. But really quickly before we do, if you're new here or if you haven't done so yet, make sure to subscribe by hitting the button right down below the video. It's totally free to do so and so I can keep you updated each and every day during this very busy time as information continues to change very, very rapidly. I'm doing all the research so that you don't need to and I break it all down into these short videos so that you can get the latest details hot off the wire each and every day as this information is being released. So again, thanks so much for joining me. Make sure to subscribe down below so you don't miss any updates going forward and my dedication to you and this community is to be here right by your side to help you out in any way that I possibly can during this very confusing and busy time. All right, thanks again. Let's jump right into the video. All right, so with everything going on right now, I think a lot of us are also wondering if slash when are we going to be getting a raise to our monthly benefits? How much is it going to be? And is it going to be substantial enough to actually do something for us during this very difficult time as prices continue to get away from us with all of this rapidly rising inflation? Now, I think a lot of us could probably think back to 2020 when we talked about that $200 per month raise. That's not what this video is all about, but I do think a lot of us think back to that day and think, gee, it sure would be pretty nice if they would have implemented that $200 per month raise for all of the millions of beneficiaries. A lot of us would probably be sitting in a much different position right now in the event that that actually would have been implemented. However, one quick side note on that, that was actually set to expire at the end of 2021. So um, I guess it probably wouldn't be the best time right now considering how uh, rapidly rising prices are right now to probably have that $200 per month dropped. But again, it never even happened in the first place. But my point is, it sure would have been nice and it probably would have helped out a lot of people in a really, really big way. But anyway, just a quick side note there. It's kind of hard to not think about that because that was something that uh, was very encouraging at the time when it was introduced by that small handful of lawmakers. Maybe there's a way, who knows, maybe there's a way we could possibly get out to Congress and have them introduce something once again like that. Either way, that'd be pretty nice. But again, I apologize. Just a quick side note there, uh, but anyway, let's quickly talk about what's going on right now and how this may pertain to all of these millions of beneficiaries. By the way, I'm talking about 70 million beneficiaries under the umbrella and under all of those benefits that I mentioned at the beginning of the video. So anyway, with everything going on right now, inflation continues to rage higher as we, as we continue to see on a monthly basis. And realistically, with everything going on right now, um, the analysts, the experts, a bit, uh, everybody going uh, that's talking about this right now is anticipating we're likely going to be seeing 10% or possibly even higher inflation at some point here in mid-2022. Unless they do something about it relatively rapidly, we're going up much higher than where we are right now. So as a result of that, we're also seeing some preliminary numbers coming out as far as how much of a raise millions of beneficiaries could be getting on your monthly benefits going forward. So there's a few different numbers out there that have been floating around, and I do want to implement these into this video and kind of give you a better idea of where we could be sitting um, in the near term, well, in the future, I should say, um, in, uh, in regards to your monthly benefits and what your benefit could look like as a result of some of these bigger raises that some of these people are talking about. So the raises that we're talking about here, I wanna break down into, these, into this video and give you some actual um, numbers to kind of lean on to kind of give you an idea of what we're talking about here. All right, so let's real quickly run through some of these numbers here. And now what I wanna apply here is a 7.6% and a 7.9% raise to your monthly benefits. So I want to break all this down and show you the differences between what it would look like between a 7.6% raise and a 7.9% raise. I think you're going to be a little bit surprised here between the differences of the two. It's well, I'll let you judge that. Let me actually break these numbers down for you. All right. So I'm going to give you some round numbers here. Just like I've done in other videos, I like to give you round numbers just because it'll kind of give you a general idea of where to be. And realistically, it'll get you within just a couple of dollars of where your benefit would be anyway. So let's break this down. All right, so if you're receiving a $600 benefit, applying a 7.6 to 7.9% raise, it would boost your benefits anywhere between $45 and $47 each and every month. So you know, as you can see there, it's not much of a difference. It would be $45 at a 7.6% and $47 at a 7.9%. So it's only a $2 difference. All right, so anyway, that's that example. 
Now let's talk about a $700 raise. If you're receiving a $700 benefit, applying a 7.6% or 7.9% raise to your monthly benefits, it boosts your benefits anywhere between $53 and $55 each and every month. Again, $53 for the 7.6 and $55 for the 7.9%. So again, not that much of a difference between the two. Let's keep rolling though. If you're receiving an $800 monthly benefit, applying a 7.6% raise to a 7.9% raise, again, it would raise your benefits anywhere between 63 and 60, or sorry, $60 and $63 each and every month. So as you can see there, $60 on the 7.6 and $63 on the 7.9. So again, not like a ton of money difference between those two uh, raise differences. All right, so let's quickly talk about SSI. Now, if you're receiving the maximum SSI benefit right now, the $841 each and every month, your benefit would actually be raised, you know, a pretty substantial amount. Well, you know, proportionate to the percentages, but let me give you the numbers here. In the event of a 7.6 to 7.9% raise to your benefits, your benefit would go from 841 to either 904 or $907 each and every month. So as you can see there, again, the spread between the two only being $3 difference between a 7.6 and a 7.9, but remember, that's on a monthly basis. So I guess if you extrapolate that over the course of the entire year, $3 per month would be an extra $36 for the year. So I guess, you know, over the course of the year, I guess it's $36, but on a monthly basis, it's only a matter of $3, right? So it's not like we're talking $30 or $100, anything like that. It's just a couple dollars. But anyway, every dollar counts right now. We cannot dismiss even a dollar during these days. All right, so let's quickly talk about a $900 benefit. If you're receiving 900 bucks right now and you apply a 7.6 or 7.9% raise to that, you'd be looking at anywhere between a, um, well, the, the, the amount you'd be getting is anywhere between 968 and $971 per month. So again, about a $3 spread there between the 7.6 six and the 7.9 percent. All right, one more example here. If you're receiving a $1,000 benefit, applying a 7.6 or 7.9 percent raise to your benefits, again, would raise your benefits anywhere between $76 and $79 per month. Again, a spread of only $3 is the difference. So as you can see there, realistically, if you are somebody kind of on the lower end, the $600, $700 range, you're the difference between the two is only about $2. And the higher that you go up, of course, because we're calculating with percentages, um, it continues to adjust as a percentage basis, right? So about $3. So realistically, whether the raise is, again, 7.6%, 7.9%, anything like that, it's only gonna be a matter of a couple dollars each and every month. But again, like I said, we cannot dismiss even a single dollar these days. We want it all, give it all to us. Please make it fast, give it to us now, <laughs> right? So I think that's what we're probably all thinking right now. Uh, but anyway, these are some of the preliminary numbers that I've seen out there as of right now. Of course, we won't know what the official number will be until about mid-October when the Social Security Administration comes out and gives us the final announcement on this number after we get the inflation data for the months of July, August, and September. But again, the year is zipping right on by so far, and before we know it, we're going to be right there in those months. But economists, analysts, everybody that's watching this stuff very closely right now is saying that we're likely going to see 10% or thereabout inflation sometime in mid-2022. Well, guess what? Mid-2022 is kind of right in that time frame, July, August, and September. You know, obviously, you know, may include June also, but at the same time, June doesn't count for what we're looking for. It's those three months, Ju uh, July, August, and September, that actually indicate how much the cold arrays will be for all these millions of beneficiaries. So anyway, at least it's a little bit of something to look forward to going forward, but realistically, it sure would be nice if Congress did something well before then to get more money into the pockets of the people. And I'm not necessarily talking about a raise, that would be nice too, but realistically, we're talking about more something like a stimulus check, a relief check, an anti-inflationary check, a survival check, uh, who knows what, whatever they want to call it, check. We don't really care. Just money is what we want. Um, so anyway, hopefully we can count on Congress to do something at least in the near term, maybe the middle term, honestly, sometime before the midterm elections, the sooner would ultimately be better. But, um, 
Again, I wanted to break it all down for you. These are the few of the numbers that I've seen floating around out there as preliminary estimates as to what the COLA could be. Now, again, just a couple days ago, the Senior Citizens League was out actually talking about this, and they were projecting a 7.6%. So even they are pretty accurate with their uh, uh, with their analysis and their estimates. But again, it's all preliminary at this time because we need a lot more data points here before we can come up with any substantial numbers. But they're calculating it too, exactly kind of where I'm finding these numbers numbers at too as well. So kind of interesting stuff. One more thing I want to throw out there as well. Of course, the menace that we all got to watch for too, Medicare Part B premiums. So that's another big one out there that we would have to watch going forward into 2023 and later this year as the Centers for Medicare and Medicaid Services comes out with that number. Last year in 2021, it was a whopper 14.5%. And that was an ugly one for a lot of us. So we can only hope that uh, they come to their senses when they... Uh, calculate how much the Medicare Part B premium would be for next year as well. And again, that'll be released usually sometime in early November is when that's released. And, uh, you know, hopefully they can uh, be a little bit more reasonable this year going forward. But again, it's all revolving around inflation. Our new favorite word of the year, inflation. Yeah, <laughs> I'm kidding. That is not our favorite word. It is not a favorite word at all. We don't even like it. Inflation, get out of here. We don't like you. You know what I mean? <laughs> My point is, inflation is not anybody's friend right now, at least anybody in this community. Um, if it's your friend, let me know. Um, I'd like to know what you're doing to actually think that inflation is a good thing right now. It may be a good thing for some people, but for the vast majority of people who are living on a low income or a fixed income or anything like this, inflation is not our friend. Not right now, anyway. So anyway, I want to break this down for you, let you know what I'm looking at, all the things that I'm finding out there with the research. And again, these are kind of the, some of the numbers that I wanted to break down for you in this video and just to let you know what is going on out there, what I'm finding, and what the research is suggesting and pointing toward right now. So again, hope you're having a nice day. Thank you so much for watching this. Make sure to subscribe down below. I'm doing anything I possibly can to help you out. So if you have any ideas, any feedback, any questions, comments, anything like that, please leave those down below. I do my best to read as many as I possibly possibly can. And I try to respond to as many as possible as well. Of course, I can't respond to everybody, but I do my best to respond to as many as possible. So leave your questions and comments down below. Also subscribe, go back and check out any of the other 2,300 videos here on the channel, and feel free to share them with your friends, family, and social media. Thanks again. I appreciate you. Enjoy your day. Stay safe out there, and I'll catch you again later in the next video.